Well, hello everyone and welcome to my July Book Roundup. I'm going to give you short reviews and ratings of the 10 books that I read this month. If you like what you see, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And if you leave me a comment, I'll be happy to uh, converse with you in the comments section below. If you hit the little bell icon, you'll even get a notification next time I upload a video. You can also follow me on Twitter or Goodreads for more book content. So let's get started. I read one book on my Kindle this month and that was Breach of Peace by Daniel Green. You probably know about Daniel's channel. Daniel is one of the biggest booktubers out there. He specializes in the fantasy and science fiction genres and runs a fantastic channel. So when he started talking about his book, I knew that I wanted to read it. It's a novella and it's very grimdark, which is very interesting to me because Daniel's kind of a pretty upbeat and energetic guy and he wrote some really dark stuff in this book. I felt the world building was a little fuzzy, but I did like the characters and I liked the story and I like the horror elements. You can tell that like me, he's a big fan of Stephen King. So I enjoyed Breach of Peace enough that I'll definitely pick up the next novel, which is the next thing he's gonna publish in the series. But I gave Breach of Peace by Daniel Green three out of five. So I read a bit of science fiction this month, one of which was William Gibson's Neuromancer. Love this green cover, and isn't that a really cool cover there? Uh, can't say I love the book. I am not a fan of the science fiction type of stories that have a lot of jargon, and this did. When this book was focusing on the characters and the character development, I really liked it. When it was focusing on <clears throat> the scientific jargon, I it just kind of lost me. So for this, this was a just kind of a in-between book for me. I didn't like it or hate it. I can see the appeal though. So I can see that a lot of people probably would like Neuromancer, but it just wasn't for me. So I gave Neuromancer by William Gibson 2.5 out of five. All right, some nonfiction I read this month. I read The Choice by Dr. Edith Ava Ager. And this book is so, so powerful. Dr. Eger is a Holocaust survivor from Auschwitz, but this isn't doesn't dwell on her experiences there. The bulk of the book is her life as a survivor and dealing with the trauma that she went through. And it's difficult to read at times, but it is so, so powerful. I'm so glad that this was gifted to me uh, at a workshop that I attended last month because this is one of the finest works of nonfiction that I've read this year. The Choice, five out of five. All right, I read two works that only appeal to musicians. I'm a musician, so I'm just gonna give you quick ratings for these, but if you are a musician and you want an in-depth review, let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to write a response to that. But I read a, a work on the Brahms Four Symphonies by Walter Frisch. I gave this one a four out of five. And then I wrote, read a book by Nicholas Harnon Court about early music, the musical dialogue, thoughts about Monteverdi, Bach, and Mozart. And I gave this one a four out of five as well. And again, if you wanna hear more about those, I know that's a very small percentage of the people that watch these book videos. Just let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to let you know my thoughts on those books. All right, the big series I started this month was Dune. So I'm gonna talk about the first book and then I'll talk about the other two. Actually, I'm not gonna talk about the first book because I already dropped a review on this one. So uh, I'll put it up here, I'll put it in the description below, but this is one of the finest works of science fiction that I've ever read. I loved the book. So I was excited to pick up the sequels. So I picked up the second and third books, Dune Messiah and Children of Dune, and was disappointed. Both featured a lot of politicking that wasn't nearly as interesting as what happened in the first book. And the type of politics, I like that in a good story, you know, a fantasy or science fiction story, but in this case, it just really slowed things down. And somehow in Dune Messiah, Herbert made Paul, our hero from the first book, easily the least interesting character in the book. The book, I wasn't liking it, but it did redeem itself. The ending of Dune Messiah is absolutely beautiful. So because of that, I gave it a three out of five. Children of Dune, I think was better, but it still got bogged down by a lot of things. And I didn't like the trajectory of some of the characters and just some of the choices that he made along, along the storyline. 
So overall, same rating for this one. I gave this one three out of five. I will continue on into the Dune Saga because I have seen people say that the fourth book, God Emperor of Dune, is as good as the first, or some even say it's the finest science fiction novel ever written. So I will pick those up, not this month, because I'm going on into a different series this month, but probably in September, I'll be talking about the other Dune books, um, the four, five, and six in the story. All right, two more to go. One more science fiction work. I did read a lot of sci-fi this month. I read a book from Firefly, which is one of my favorite TV shows. This was Generations by Tim Lebin. This is the fourth novel in the Firefly universe. If you know Firefly, you know that it was a television show that was canceled after one season. There was a feature film that kind of completed the story, but they've had some comic books, the only comic books I own, and some novels that have been just telling stories in this universe. I really liked Generations. What I liked most was the world building. The world building in Firefly didn't have a chance to really get built because it got canceled after 14 episodes. And I didn't feel the first three books written by James Lovegrove in this series did much of that, but I felt that this book did a great job at just giving us a little bit more about the universe, especially some of the events that led up to where the universe is um, in this book. The only thing I didn't like about this book, uh, the character River Tam, I don't think that point of view chapters from her that are coherent are, should be considered canon because I just don't feel that her state of mind in the, in the books, in the series, in this part of the series is accurate. If you think of the last episode of the show, Forces of Nature, we saw the glimpse of you know how jumbled her brain is. So I feel that that kind of detracted from this book. But overall, I gave it a solid four out of five. All right, one more by my favorite author, Stephen King's The Institute. This is one that was published uh, two or three years ago, and I just missed it. This is one of those rare Stephen King books where the, the knock on Stephen King is that he doesn't know how to finish a book. And you have this grand journey, and the ending may or may not work. And a lot of times it doesn't work. The ending worked here really, really well. In fact, I thought the epilogue was absolutely brilliant. But the journey wasn't quite as good as I expect. There were a lot of two-dimensional characters in this book, which is so anti-Stephen King, one of the kings of characters. So I, I liked this book a lot, but it wasn't near the level of, you know, some of the ones you see beside me facing the camera here. So the Institute really liked it, gave it four out of five. So my book of the month was Dune by Frank Herbert. Please go watch that review. Not many people saw it, but I really think that it's a great book and I love talking about it. So I'd love for a few more of you to see that video. Again, if you liked what you saw here, please hit like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Goodreads. Until next time, thanks for watching. Goodbye.